My name is Tristan Williams, and this is a story of God sinned. Oh my God! Oh my God! He's going there. Oh my God! Can't be more thankful, can't be more excited. Y'all stay tuned. Season one, final cut. So 2023, um, this is uh, season one for the final cut. It's our first ever season um, here on YouTube. Uh, and it's our second deer season as a company. So, you know, we really started this thing with the, with the vision of creating stellar hunting content, you know, telling the stories of uh, blue collar bow hunters that live here in Southern Iowa. Um, you know, we hunt all permission ground, some leased ground, uh, just mainly permission. We hunt a lot of public, um, it's low budget, um, just doing what we can to, to kill big deer and produce awesome content to bring to you guys. So we've got the blessing to hunt on some really awesome uh, uh, pieces of ground. You know, these farmers are letting us manage these farms from start to finish. Um, like I said, Food Plus, TSI, uh, uh, making trails, access, it's just everything, everything that it takes to kill a big deer. Um, and you know, Southern Iowa is tough. Uh, there's not a lot of timber. So, you know, coming from Missouri where I grew up, uh, it's been a big culture shock. I mean, this is my first year hunting in Iowa. Um, you know, I'm used to hunting just conti continuous tracks of timber, large tracks of timber, um, you know, hunting benches and filters off of ridges and just trying to break it down from a timber aspect to we're now living in southern Iowa, you know, we don't have a lot of that. We've got a lot of CRP, we got a lot of open ground, we got a lot of crops. So, you know, it's been difficult to to um, adapt to that. I feel like I've done well at it as far as, um, you know, learning where these deer live, um, you know, kind of how they move. And, you know, it's just been a blast really trying to learn it. But, you know, these farms that I got blessed with my first year in Iowa are awesome. Um, they've been super good to me. It's been a blast uh, managing them and watching all these deer grow that we've had on camera. Hi guys, we uh, just pulled up to a new farm we got permission to here in um, Southern Iowa. We're about 10 minutes from, from my house. So it's gonna be a nice farm to hunt this year, um, close to home. Historically, we've heard there's big deer on it. Um, it's about 240 acres. Uh, it sets up beautifully. It's super, super hilly, um, but it, creates a lot of really good travel corridors. There's a lot of big timber on it and a lot close to the neighbors. So um, we're out here for the first time, just kind of exploring. We've got some buck fever booner blend we're gonna put out um, in front of a few tacticams. So it's June 8th, so it's pretty early, but we're gonna try to, the deer are putting on horns really fast. So we're gonna try to get inventory to what's out here and hopefully watch a couple big ones grow. So 
we're gonna get this stuff on the ground and get to work. September rolls around um, we really had three deer that we were primarily focusing on um, that was freak show godsend and a deer we called optimus those were on two different farms um, you know we've been watching them they were frequenting our farms a lot they were living on us um, and, and just spending all of their time there so so we we built the system around them uh, uh, to hopefully get an opportunity out of at them coming up in October 1st here in southern Iowa today's Wednesday three days away from postseason opener here in Iowa um, this Sunday so super excited um, it's still been very warm um, but apparently it hasn't really mattered for these bucks you know we've had all of our target bucks hitting this scrape uh, four nights in a row now um, on the farm that we're headed to down here um, in Clio so we call it our Clio farm we've got some big ones on it um, a lot of eight pointers but man they're all big um, deer that I'm going to be chasing. He's my number one right now. Uh, we call him Godsend. He's just a giant framed eight pointer. Six or seven years old. I mean just a super mature, absolute brute of a buck. I mean his body is absolutely ginormous. And he's been hitting this scrape every night. So we are um, headed in there. We're, we're going to hang a stand about 25 yards from the scrape that he's hitting every night. Um, he's been hitting it with two other big shooters, you know, bully bucks. Um, and it's just, it's perfect. I mean, I, I don't know, it's like I said, it's still a little bit unseasonably warm in Iowa. I mean, it's supposed to be 89 degrees on Sunday on opening day. But these bucks have been hitting it, so I mean, if they keep showing up, we're gonna go in there and kill them, hopefully. Uh, but we're gonna go in today, obviously unscented, very careful. Um, we've got a good wind to sneak in there and hopefully not disturb them in their bedding areas. So we're gonna move in, get this stand hung, get the camera arm set, I mean, everything ready for you know, Sunday night. Um, he's going to be my biggest buck today. He's going to be probably my oldest buck today and by far my heaviest buck today. This thing looks like a cow on the hoof. Uh, I can't wait to see him in person. I have not laid eyes on him in person yet. So uh, we're going to move in and uh, see if we can get all this stuff rigged up, ready to go and get ready for Sunday. Bow season opener here in Iowa. You're good, it's rolling. Okay. That's what I do. Go. All right, guys, we're here at the farm. Um, getting ready to pack in. We've got a bunch of gear, obviously. Uh, we didn't go hang a full set here, so I'm like, beyond excited um you know it's funny we've actually been talking to people today that are like man we ain't getting any of our bucks on camera like it's just been so hot can't get them on camera we don't know where they are you know they're out in the beans living in the beans living in the corn we're just super blessed i guess to have the situation we're in right now um these bucks are hitting the scrape every night in front of our cameras they're big bucks at that um so you know to have them that active this early in the season is awesome and uh, I'm just super pumped to kill my biggest buck ever, hopefully. So we're gonna get in here. Like I said, we've been watching this deer all summer. Um, his name's Godsend. He's, he's you know, he, I, he's came up from the bottom. You know, he, he's put on a lot of extra inches um, since we've seen him this summer. He's out of velvet now, hard horned, starting to get swelled up. Um, he's been running around with the same bucks all year and uh, they've all just gotten bigger and bigger. So 
we're super excited to, to see him in person for the first time. But it's going to be about a almost three quarter of a mile walk in, you know, one way from where we're at. So we're going to take off through the beans and get to work, see if we can't uh, get a cool set hung up for this deer. So we're closing in on the area. This timber draw right here is kind of what we're hunting. So we think he's bedding from either point A right here to my left from point B back to the other side of the farm on that fence line. So he travels this ditch and he's got scrapes all up and down it. And uh, we're just trying to figure out exactly where he is. We don't know exactly where he sleeps, but we know where his core area is, where he's hitting the scrapes and feeding in the evening. So headed down that way we're gonna try to ease our way down this this uh, timber ditch let's be as quiet as possible and hopefully we don't bump him so let's roll to be a long jumper in high school. So October 1st rolls around. Um, the main deer that we were focused on, he was showing up every day almost. He was super patternable, hitting our mock scrapes, you know, just day in and day out. Uh, was a deer we called Freak Show. He was just this big, wide, massive eight pointer. Um, definitely a six or seven year old deer, just a world class eight pointer here in Southern Iowa. Um, I've got a thing for big eights. Um, I don't know what it is, but I, I just, they're awesome. You know, they're rare. Um, I don't know if that's part of it, but man, I just, uh, I was super excited. I was super stoked to get in the woods. Um, October 1st rolled around. It actually kind of had a, a little cold front roll in. So we hit the woods immediately. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, it is October 1st, opening day of bow season. <coughs> Me and Rochelle are here at one of our Southern Iowa farms. We've been working on this farm and watching it all summer. Um, you can see we have short sleeves on. It's uh, actually 90 degrees right now. But um, we're hunting a buck named Ballsy. That, uh, he was just here last night when it was still 90 degrees, um, just a few minutes before shooting light. So we're going to go climb in a tree. Um, it doesn't feel like we should be hunting, but Ballsy was here last night um, hitting our scrape and we're sitting 25 yards from it, so I don't know. We'll see if he does it again. We're going to get in the stand. So 
So the first week of season, uh, you know, it was tough. It was a grind. Uh, the weather warmed back up. We weren't seeing a whole lot of activity. Um, but, you know, October 7th, we, we had the right wind for this new set we had just hung. Uh, we knew Freak Show was there the night before. So Rochelle and I snuck in, and uh, we got in for a short afternoon sit. We are uh, about to head in the woods um, here at our Clio farm. Um, got the Hoyt in hand ready to roll. B3 broadheads are ready to go. Uh, we're hunting two specific bucks tonight um, for myself. Uh, one I talked about earlier, we call him Godsend. And then there's another massive eight pointer that we call Freak Show. Um, I don't really have a preference. Any, any one of those two that steps out first, I'm gonna shoot. So uh, today is our last day of warm weather. We have a massive cold front coming um, with some extreme weather, rain and, and uh, wind. So we're hoping they're gonna feel that pressure change coming to get on their feet and come eat tonight, maybe hit the scrape underneath our stand. So we're gonna be in there waiting for them. And uh, like I said, it's just about four o'clock. We're headed in, see if we can get it done.
smoked. That's the biggest buck in my life. Rochelle, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The first sit ever in this stand on this farm for my number one target buck. All right, guys, I just put an arrow through Freak Show. The stand's right here behind me. He was standing right in here somewhere. Um, it's about a 15 yard shot, but I'm also 36 feet up in this tree, so I had a pretty good uh, down angle. Um, he came in from a way I didn't expect him to, so that's why, obviously, we took a shot into the timber where I had no shooting lanes. What's up? It's a warm one. It is. Well, I uh, have a feeling I didn't make an exit because he's not bleeding yet because I shot straight down on him, so my guess is maybe it got stuck in his sternum or his ribs because he's not bleeding. Um, but I lost sight of him like right at the edge of these beans and it looked like he was about to crash. So I stopped here to wait for you guys. But if he, if I didn't make an exit, he's not going to bleed is a problem. Unless he fills all the way up and comes out like the top of his back, you know? Yeah. Placement so, looked good though as far as... Front yeah, front to back, yeah. And I mean, it's so straight down. If it was behind his shoulder, it should have smoked everything from that high. So we'll just kind of ease our way up. Um, you just ran literally straight line. Yeah, it's kind of, you can't see our tree from here, but we'll just kind of help me look for blood through here and we'll just see if we see him. All right, guys, it's the uh, next morning. Um, we looked for him a little bit last night. Um, didn't see a whole lot, so we wanted to back out just in case, uh, you know, he had survived and didn't want to push him. So we came back in this morning uh, pretty early. It's 10.45 now. We probably looked for about three hours. Um, couldn't find my arrow. We ended up, we walked the whole ditch basically on this farm. There's not a whole lot of timber to it. And uh, we ended up finding blood about 150 yards from the stand. And it was decent looking blood, like arterial blood. It wasn't, def definitely wasn't lung blood, but it wasn't, you know, dark liver or muscle blood. Um, it just wasn't a whole lot of it. We probably tracked it for another 120 yards, and then it kind of ran out. Um, by the looks of it, he went on to the neighbors. Um, but with that much blood, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, we just we just ran out of it. So I don't know. I guess the story is going to live on for Freak Show as of now. Um, I'm hoping that he's just still alive. Um, I made a high shot that kind of went through the center of his back. Um, not sure how it didn't spine him. Uh, don't really know what all I hid inside of there, but um, I think the arrow's still in him. Um, so hopefully I can just get another crack at him and you know kill him, and I don't I don't want him to suffer. So I don't know. We'll see if he shows back on the tacticams, and uh, we'll definitely be back in to hunt him if he does. If not, I guess we're gonna move on to the next one for now and see what nature nature does. So it kind of sucks, but you know it was a cool experience. Um, anytime you get to see a big mature buck like that and take a crack at him, I guess we just live and learn. Kind of messed it up, I guess. Got to wait for a better shot opportunity next time. Cut some better shooting lanes. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys, we are in the stand. It is, I mean, as you can tell, I don't know how good you can hear me, but. Sitting right below me here, and uh, 
he's got to shoot a buck tonight too if um, you know if the opportunity presents itself um be his first bow buck so we're pretty excited uh, we had some bucks hitting the scrapes in here last night So October 21st rolls around and uh, the Tacticam goes off. Uh, we checked it out and sure enough, on the Clio farm, it was freak show. He was alive and healthy. He didn't appear to lose any weight. Um, he came in with another deer that's an absolute baby giant. He had been running with him a lot during the summer. And when I seen him in the front foreground, I looked back behind him and sure enough, it was freak show. Uh, we were super excited to see that he was alive and healthy. Uh, only for him just a week later to absolutely vacate the farm and would never show up again. So we continued hunting, chasing around multiple different deer on, on some of my other farms and it was just an absolute grind. You know, late October, movement was starting to pick up in the woods. We were seeing lots of bucks, lots of deer every night, every morning, and we just couldn't catch up to one. You know, the mature bucks were being tough. Um, it was an unseasonably warm year. Uh, as far as you know October early November and uh, you know the rut rolled around we had high hopes uh, that, you know something would come in from another farm these deer would start uh, moving around on our farm as far as targets bucks go and um, it just it just wouldn't happen for us you know we hunted 13 days in a row all day sits with an hour lunch break um, and we were just really starting to get down you know uh, hunting that many hours is, is tough, as all of you know, it's, uh, it's a grind. I mean, that's why we love it. Uh, it keeps us out there, but man, we are ready for a break. Sure enough, on November 9th, uh, we had a deer show up from early summer that we called Godsend. Um, he had come back onto the farm. Um, you know, he's just a, a giant, tall, massive eight-pointer. Um, we think he's in the seven to eight-year-old class. Um, and it was just an absolute, you know, our number one target. He showed up, he was on the farm, and we knew it. So we had to move in on him and, and, and play our cards right. All right, guys, it's November 15th. It is 60 degrees outside. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. I was sitting on the computer working, trying to get caught up and selling some real estate. Just got pictures of the biggest buck on the farm. Um, Godsend. Uh, he come through standing bean plot at 645 this morning and I was so tempted to just climb in the tree because I knew he was in there. And I should have done it. He just come back by about 15 minutes ago. Uh, mouth open. He's rutting. Um, and he's walking on to the farm towards the center of the farm. Um, I'm hauling butt over there. I don't know if it's early enough. I don't know if I can beat him to the stand. I'm trying to figure out what to do, but I'm going to try to get there in glass and see if I can see him first. So at least I know how not to bump him and maybe where I can get to. It's probably going to take a matter of just rattling him back in. <sighs> you know, there's not a whole lot of places for him to roam. I mean, the direction he went, <clears throat> there ain't all that much timber. There's only just a few doe bedding areas. And, uh, two of the does I know for a fact happen to be bedded right by this stand that I have up So I think I'm gonna try to start there as long as I can get to it um, without spooking him and I can maybe lay eyes on him That's where I'm gonna head because I know there's does close and he's gonna try to go scent check the does. So I don't know guys. He's big uh, Pop up this trail camera picture of him. Um, just walked by 15 minutes ago I'm pumped. Uh, stuck behind a semi right now, but I'm trying to get there as quick as I can. So we're going to see what happens. We ain't got nobody to film us. So I'm going to do the best I can. Um, but fingers crossed. Let's go kill Godson. Alright guys. It is November 15th. We, uh, we're sitting in our rhino's blind. We're tucked in here. It's about um, 12.30 in the afternoon. So we slipped into this blind about 10 o'clock because this morning uh, the buck we call Godsend, it's the giant framed eight pointer. Um, he went into this bedding area at about 
6.45, so daylight this morning, which was unfortunate. I mean, I wish I was in the stand. But then I was like, man, I know he's in there. Should I should I climb in the stand now? And I, I pondered it and pondered it. I had a bunch of work to get done, so I stayed home. I didn't get in the stand. About 9.30, he come back out of the bedding area into my standing bean plot. Mouth open, he was rutting, looking for a hot dough. So he's all over the farm. Um, as soon as we got that picture, we busted butt over here. And we climbed in this blind. Um, we've got a good wind for it. Um, it's warm. It's I mean, it's 65 degrees today. November 15th. It's crazy, crazy warm. But we know he's on the farm. We know he's looking for a doe. Um, he's been very inconsistent up to this point. I mean, he's kind of been a ghost since early October. So... You know, he's huge. He'll be my biggest deer ever. Um, I've been sitting here pondering. I'm actually texting my buddy CD right now. Um, I'm, you know, I am pondering going up to another stand to the north, which is the direction that he headed. Obviously, it's risky. I mean, we know he likes to come in here. This is kind of his home area. So we're trying to decide if we should stay here for the rest of the afternoon try to slip up to the north and, and slip in that stand we're gonna sit tight for a while and uh, see what happens but we'll keep you guys posted um, I'm gonna do my best to film it you know I, I, I didn't have anybody to come with me to film today everybody's busy so and I didn't bring a tripod for this blind I'm not used to hunting out of these blinds you know I've been in the tree so we're gonna do our best to get it all on film for you guys but Stay tuned, we're going to see if we can't kill Godson. Fingers crossed. So as I'm sitting there, you know, I'm starting to lose hope. I'm wondering if I made the right choice. I was wondering if I should have just snuck into my stand on the north side. And at this point, all I can do um, was wait and, and just pray to God that he'd come back through. Uh, you know, I, I prayed a lot uh, today. I, I was talking to God, just asking Him to, to give me that opportunity. And, and uh, it, it's just been a crazy year, you know. What else can you do uh, except for hope for the best and, and, and pray that God has a plan for you? You know, that's uh, we chase these deer all around, spending all of our time, effort, money. Um, sacrifice a lot of things at home and, and work. and. It was just, like I said, catching up to me. I was really getting in my head, and uh, I was just, just ready for a break, and I was praying that, that this was the day. back to the truck I just backed out I just arrowed the biggest buck of my life I put an arrow in him I you know it's getting a little bit dark I don't know exactly where I hit but when he turned 
I can see that only about half of my arrow went in. So I'm hoping maybe I just put it right in the pump station and it's sticking in his offside shoulder. But there's really no telling. I didn't hear him run that far. He ran, I watched him, I lost him. And then I just, I didn't hear anything. So I'm hoping he went down and about a minute to 90 seconds after I shot, I could hear some rustling. So hopefully it's him on the ground, but boys, our phone's dead. We're, we're headed to the truck to charge that. We're gonna call the family. We're gonna call Rochelle, get some people out here. We'll probably give them a couple hours just to be safe and uh, get back in here and look for him. So we're headed to the truck now. We're gonna review the footage. I did my best, you know, on getting it on film. So we're gonna go check it out and see how it looks. But man, what an experience. Giant, giant eight pointer. I'm just super ecstatic. And I'll tell you what, God painted one for me tonight. I'm hoping it's a good sign for what's to come. Check this out. All right guys, we just slipped in here. We're right where we shot him. Um, arrow broke off which we knew it did when we reviewed the footage um, we've got blood all the way up to about right here on the arrow which means we had good penetration and I think it was in a killer spot so we're about to cross the fence um, this fence behind me is a neighbor uh, that I have permission to hunt on um, so we're gonna go in here and I'm hoping he's gonna be laying right where I heard him last move so if that's the case he's not far but let's get in there and we'll see if he's dead it's painted red, look at this. Oh my god! Oh my god! You gotta be kidding me! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Stiff as a hammer! Look at this freaking deer! Oh my gosh! Come on, get this in for it. Oh my goodness! Old <laughs> I am, dude. Look at the freaking timeline and an absolute brute, dude. Oh my goodness! <sighs> Thank you, Lord. I have been waiting for this freaking day, guys. Oh. oh, I don't even know what to say. This has been one of the toughest seasons I've ever had. It's my first season ever really hunting in Iowa. and I have put in so much work to these deer. Pre-season, all summer, just Literally everything. I mean, I've been putting in all day sits. I hunted 13 days in a row. All day sits. Just 
never given up. You know, I shot a deer on this farm early season. Another big eight that I never found, and you know, it, it broke me. Uh, I just, I just never give, gave up. I knew there was more big deer out here, and this is proof of it right here. This is godsend buck I've had pictures of all summer. I got a lot of history with him this year. Got to watch him grow from nubs, and we just finished the story. My first Iowa buck. And he's a freaking dandy, man. I cannot be more thankful. First call to my dad. He's been waiting for this day. He knows the stresses I've been through. I know he's asleep right now, but I think he'll wake up. Yeah, let me talk to Dad. Hey. Uh, I got him, Dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He was dead in two minutes, man. Blood everywhere. Yeah. I double lunged him. He didn't go 80 yards. How far did the arrow go in? Uh, every bit of 12 to 14 inches. Okay. Dude, he's a freaking brute. <laughs> I mean, the biggest body deer I've ever killed. He's freaking awesome, man. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. I'll send you some pictures. I'll let you go back to sleep. I just okay. gotta tell you. Yeah, I can't wait to see you. Yeah. All right. Oh. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. Love you too. All right. Bye. Bye. Holy cow, dude. <laughs> I cannot believe it, man. All right, guys, here he is, uh, Godsend, my 2023 Iowa bow buck. Um, we got him out in the daylight to get some cool pictures of him. Try to do this old deer some justice. Um, thing's just massive, man. He's got awesome, awesome tine length, great mass. Just a true, you know, old warrior of a buck. Um, we killed him out of this rhino's blind you can see behind me, um, over these staining beans. Um, I gotta give a huge shout out to the McConaughey family for letting me, uh, you know, give me the opportunity to hunt and manage his farm. Um, they left in some beans for me. I traded them some video work to leave me some beans. So, got to say thanks to them and everybody that helped me get them out. Um, my girlfriend obviously letting me do all this, and uh, my intern, you know, helping me on the camera side of things. So, it's been a team effort. It's been a tough year, um, just at an absolute grind, but finally paid off. We got our Iowa buck down with a buck. Man, what an experience it was for me to, you know, to share this moment with all my friends um, and family. Uh, deer hunting can be a, a, a challenging sport. Um, all I can tell you is just never get down on yourself. Um, your whole entire season can change in 30 seconds. And I mean, that was a telltale story of this day. Um, I knew he was in there. I didn't know if he was gonna come back through. It seemed like at this point in the season, I just couldn't catch a break and nothing was gonna work out. And I know we all get like that as much as we may not want to admit it, but man, you just got to keep your head down and grind. Um, these deer are smart, but you know, they're always able to be outsmarted. You just got to play your cards right, put in the time, put in the work, study these deer, and just do everything you can to put yourself in front of one. So I can't thank all the guys on my team at Final Cut, um, you know, Tate, Brant, Colin, Lane, Hunter, um, everybody that's helped me uh, emotionally, mentally this year, just keeping me motivated and pushing me to go get in the stand. Um, you guys are awesome, and uh, like I said, it's been a tough year for all of us, but uh, this was just icing on the cake to, to get, the, get the year rolling, and um, I gotta thank the McConaughey family again, um, giving me the opportunity to hunt this farm. Um, it's been a blessing, you know, it's a beautiful farm. I've, I've spent a lot of time there just truly learning it, managing it, 
And um, also, I want to thank our sponsors. You know, uh, I couldn't, none of us could do it without you guys. These guys just put products in our hands that we believe in. Um, they keep us in the woods, they keep us hunting effectively. We just can't thank you guys enough uh, uh, for giving us the opportunity. Um, Scree Gears kept us concealed all year. Um, we're super happy to be working with them. Um, awesome guys, awesome camo. If you guys haven't checked them out, definitely go to the links on our socials. And, and uh, So thank you guys for watching. Um, we appreciate all the support you continue to give us um, from the start. You know, we've got super big thanks coming. Hopefully we've got a lot more big deer coming this year as well from the team. And uh, we just ask that you continue to support us, like this video, and definitely subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. No tree is as a fall.